Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing my first aid USMLE step one book, how I modified it and how I use it. As you know, this is a book that you will be using and abusing throughout medical school. And you also can use this book um, to study for other examinations. And so I actually had a lot of experience using this book because in order to apply to oral and maxillofacial surgery residencies, you have to take the NBME CBSE exam, which is very similar to the USMLE. And so my number one resource when I was studying for that was the first aid book and so I realized that I'll be using this book a lot through medical school as well and modifying it actually helps make the process a lot easier because you end up spending a lot of time with this book and you want to do something to it um, to help you uh, keep everything organized and make it easy to use and make it um, accessible as well because you'll be really surprised how much time you spend flipping through all the pages trying to get to the neuro section or trying to get to the cardiac section and you're just flipping 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 and um, at the end the book can fall apart and you can be missing pages which is what happened to my last USMLE book when I was studying for the CBSC exam um, the back cover actually came off and I started losing pages and it drove me absolutely crazy and so what I will be going through today is basically what I did to my first aid book and so as you can see here the most obvious uh, modification is that I took off the very original um, binding to the book and replaced it with a spiral um, binding and so this was probably the best thing that I did because it allows me to keep the book protected and it also allows for very easy flipping through the book and most importantly, it allows me to flip the book completely over so that um, I can take notes um, very closely in the margins and I can very easily stack the pages on top of each other. If you have the first aid book, you know that the original binding is actually just a glued rubber binding. And so it makes the book super, super, um, you know, inflexible and you really can't move the pages around too much. And it's not a very great binding. And so I replaced the binding and I just went to my local FedEx store. I'm sure other stores can do it. And I asked them to cut off the rubber binding as close to um, the margin as possible. And so you can see here, I'll open up to a page, to a random page, you'll see that none of the words were cut off. I'm actually pretty far from the actual words in the margin and it still gives me some room to take notes. And so you don't lose you know, any of the words or anything like that if you ask them to cut it off at the very, very edge. And then they just replaced it with this um, spiral bound. This probably costs like $8. And so it's really, really um, a cheap way to modify this book. I also asked them to put these um, transparent uh, plastic protecting sheets and they also added these um, uh, hard rubber um, uh, sheets in between as well so that protects the cover and I still have the cover on it. So that is the first modification that I definitely recommend that you do and it ha has really helped me flip through the pages really quickly and be able to take notes um, very close to the margins because as you know your annotations in this book are almost just as important as everything else in this book so you definitely want to maximize the space in here so that you can do all of your annotations and um, still keep this book together so it doesn't start falling apart. I know that some people also um, break the binding and then just ask um, FedEx or you know Kinko's or whatever to put three um, to basically hole punch this, uh, three hole punches, and just put it in a binder so that they can add their own sheets. So that's definitely another option. I personally like for it to stay as a book instead of separating them out into my own sheets um, because I just want it together all the time. As you know, like a lot of times you'll be in the neuro section and then you'll have to refer back to GI for something in there. And so I like to have my book all together, but some people do break it up because this is pretty heavy. So some people break it up and will, you know, put each section in a binder or put the whole thing in a binder to allow themselves to add extra pages. Um, 
Another thing that I did because I broke off the binding is I got rid of some of pages I didn't want. So I got rid of all the introductory pages, um, references that they suggest that I didn't really care for. So I took out about 50 pages and just threw them out. And so this is really everything that I want in here. You can also split it up in a way where um, all the pathology sections are in one side and then the beginning like intro sections like biochemistry and microbiology could be in another side So you can really split this up however way you want and just bind all the sections I kept it all together, but that's just one of the options that you could do Okay, the other thing that I did is label all the different sections in my US assembly book and this has saved me a lot of times that sounds dramatic, but it's not because it's really hard to figure out which section you're in because they don't really label them very well. So when I put these just really um, cheap, I got them from Staples, I think, um, little uh, bookmark tabs here that you can just write on. And I basically labeled all the uh, sections in the beginning that uh, weren't patho uh, pathophysiology. So I did biochemistry, metabolism, um, immunology, microbiology, um, uh, micro, I split up the viruses, pathology and pharmacology all up top here. And then I did all the systems on the side. And so, you know, you have um, cardiology and psych and respiratory. So all the different sections are here. And I can very easily, you know, when I'm in the GI section, I can flip to the GI section and boom, I'm in GI. Now suddenly I want to go to neuro so I can flip over to the neuro section and boom, I'm in neuro. And again, because it's bound this way, I can just flip it all over. Um, and it's just keeps everything very neat. You can even, you know, I had the idea of also going into every section and splitting because in the beginning of the sections you have physiology and then you have the pathology and then you have pharmacology. So you can even go into each section within the different body systems and split those up that way. But I found that, you know, I didn't really need that too much. I was just trying to save myself time and effort and splitting them up into all the different organ systems was pretty good and keeps my book very, very organized. I have been using this book every single day for the last, I would say, six months and it still looks brand new. So all the pages are really protected and all the different sections are really easy to get to. So these are definitely modifications that I would recommend you um, you make and they are modifications that will make your life easier um, so that you could use this book and it's definitely worth it you're going to be using this book for at least a year so it's not like you know a couple of days and you can really benefit from making this book your own and feeling like you have a connection with it because you do have a connection with this this is basically like a relationship that you know sometimes you really really love and sometimes you really really hate so that's the us family book so in the next section, I want to talk about how I use the USMLE book. And the way I use this book is I make this my primary book, uh, meaning that I do use other resources, but all of my annotations go into this book. And the reason why I do that is because I think when you're studying something so much, um, and there's so much material in here, of course, as you know, the USMLE has tons and tons of information. It's really hard to keep everything Everything together and having like photo memory um, is actually really helpful and so when you annotate and put everything in one space and you're looking at it over and over again you start to build um, some you know photo memory you start to build some mechanical memory and a lot of times like in the middle of an exam I'll think back to that page in the book and my annotations and my notes and it'll start reminding me of the different things that I read in this book and so even though you can use a lot of different resources so you know like your lecture notes and you can use Dr. Golion's rapid review. Um, I talk about all these resources in a separate video. So if you're interested in all the high yield resources that I use and recommend for the US Emily, definitely make sure that you check out my other video on my channel. Um, but you can definitely use all those resources. I recommend just keeping all your annotations in one. So whether it's this book or, you know, rapid review, um, definitely keep your annotations all in this book, um, in one book. So that you can keep referring back to the same book when you're you know studying a specific section um, and that's really important so because the first aid book is comprehensive and has everything from biochemistry to organ systems 
I keep all my annotations in this book instead of a different book. Um, but I definitely, you know, I'll still use um, Dr. Sitar's uh, Fundamentals of Pathology and Dr. Gullion's Rapid Review to supplement a lot of the pathology. And I'll read through these books. Um, like, let's say I'm studying, you know, you know, acid bases. Um, and um, I'm in the uh, renal section and I want to learn more about, you know, diabetic keto um, acidosis. And so I will go ahead and read it in Dr. Golion's um, rapid review. And then, you know, I'll watch the section or read it in Pathoma. And then if um, I find that there's things in there that are really important and high yield that aren't in my first aid US Emily book, I turn over to that section in first aid, find it and supplement with annotations. And so I think that's extremely important. And you know, really how you can make this book um, helpful to you. And so I'll kind of show you a section here. This is in the cardiovascular section. And this is talking about um, vasculitis. And so I, I've, you know, I watched uh, Pathoma's video on vasculitis and I read Dr. Golian's rapid review. And then I realized that there's a couple of points that weren't in first aid that I found really helpful. So this is Dr. Sitar's little um, explanation of um, Wegner's, uh, and I ended up, you know, drawing his little stick figure, um, on the side here. And then I added a little bit more information on a post-it and, um, from now on, if I ever, if I'm ever studying vasculitis and I, you know, there's something I don't remember or I want to refer back, I don't have to look at Pathoma anymore and Dr. Golian's rapid review. I know that I've already reviewed that and I've added all the high yield important information in first aid. So this is the only resource that I need to refer back to. And hopefully when I'm taking the US assembly, I can think back to this page if I get a question and kind of remember where things are so that can really spark your memory and help you answer some questions in case you forget. So don't underestimate the power of, um, you know, having a photographic memory. Don't underestimate the power of having a resource that you refer to over and over and over again and having, you know, that comfort and that relationship with this book that can really, really help you answer a lot of questions once you get to that. So that's kind of an overview of how I use first aid and my other resources and how I put them all together. Your annotations are so, so important and you shouldn't clutter your book with tons of information. Just anything that's high yield, any concepts that you haven't you know, been able to master, definitely spend a little extra time making um, those sections in the book um, you know, complete so that you can always refer back to them when you need them. So I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that, you know, all of my techniques could help you out. This is definitely not the best technique in the entire world. It's just a technique. So pick up the bits and pieces that work for you and definitely make it your own so that you can kill any exam that you take. And, you know, of course, this doesn't apply just to first aid book. You can do these modifications on any book. You can use these study tips on anything. Um, it's really just the process and how I like to go about it that's really important. So definitely check out my uh, website and Instagram to stay up to date. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.